In today's early morning chat, I'm going to share with you my experience being a dadpreneur. Welcome to the show, Go Back to Bed, where we wake up way too early to discuss what really matters in life and business and why the home should be at the center of your solar system. I'm going to bring you into a world where entrepreneurship is a way of living, not just a way to make a living. In our conversations, you will get practical advice to help you start your day with clear priorities and confidence to pursue your goals. Most importantly, you will learn how to find your voice, meaning you know what you believe, you know what you want, you know what you stand for, and you become the writer and director of your personal and professional life. Working at home, being a dad, and being an entrepreneur, building up a business, building up a home-based business, while also enjoying the role of being a father to now two young boys, one who is four years old and one who is a year and a half. And um, uh, I want all of the, the other dads out there to be able to walk away from this episode with some ideas of what they could do to uh, make working at home and building a business at home while being a father something that um, you can enjoy and something that really works and uh, something that doesn't cause as much stress. Um, there, there, there's a lot that I learned to take away some of the stresses that come with that. And I've gotten to a place where I feel as if um, uh, I, I am at peace about the roles that I have and the ways in which I'm balancing that. So I'm, I'm really mostly speaking to all the dads out there, uh, those who are just trying to start a business, those who already have one. Um, those who are the main provider for your family and uh, it there's some real pressure that you get to deal with in that situation um, where you have the family role tugging on you and then you have the provider role and you have this thing you're trying to start with your business um, which takes time and takes focus and takes effort. So how do you manage and balance all of that in a way where you can feel um, like you're like you're really pulling it off? Today's quote is, Every father should remember that one day his son will follow his example, not his advice. Charles Kettering. That is very true. And I think that, that reminds me the importance of, uh, of living in the way that you want your children to one day live that ultimately no matter how much good advice you share with them how many things you tell them about how to live they will copy how you're living and not so much what you told them on how to live um, and that that example is so important and I, I hope that uh through the way that I'm living, through building a business at home and the way in which I am prioritizing my role as a dad, um, that that can set the example for my sons who will one day, uh, if they, if they want be dads and that they will, uh, uh, know how to then add to that in a way where they do it better than I did. Um, the hope is that as people, each generation gets better and better at things. Um, it's an okay thing that your children uh, rise above you. I think it was Yoda that said uh, the greatest burden for any teacher is that their student grows beyond them. <laughs> um and that is true. Uh, the greatest burden for a parent is that your your children uh, will grow beyond you, and that's okay. You have to be okay with that, and that is a 
signal that you did a good job. Um, you want them to grow up and then do things better than you did and be better than you are so that each generation is is improving. So I, uh, I'm definitely speaking to the dads today who are trying to build a business from home and the pressure that comes with that and my story on, on how I navigated that and, and the stresses that I dealt with. Um, and I'm sure if you are a mom and you are the provider, that you will still get a lot out of this, the underlying principles of being a parent and building a business from home and trying to manage those two roles um, very much uh, apply to you too if you're in the situation where you are the mom and you are the provider and you're trying to build a business from home. Um, you'll definitely uh, learn a lot today as well. Um, but I will... Uh, I, I will be labeling what I'm saying as uh, my experience being a dad, since that's my experience, right? But just know that if you are a mom in the same situation, uh, a lot of what I'm saying today will still apply to you too. And I applaud you for uh, also taking on that role of being a parent and, and uh, managing that along with providing for your children. So... I was three months away from the birth of my first son when I lost my full-time salary job that I had. I was about a few months, I think it was like nine months out of graduating college. We got pregnant right after I graduated. Um, about nine months later, the full-time salary job I had, I lost that and I go into more detail about my story regarding switching from salary job to freelancing and so forth in a previous episode. But um, I already had the pressure. Uh, the pressure was on already um, as my wife and I, we decided that I was going to be the only one working once our, uh, we got closer to our first kid being born so that she could be home. Well, I guess, you know, I've been home too, but so that she could be home not working and able to take care of that baby mostly more than me. Um, because children, they do need their mothers. And in a previous several episodes, we go into detail about the biological importance of babies and children and, uh, their need to have their moms in those early years very close to them and very ever present on a daily basis. So uh, we strongly believed in that. And so we're like, okay, I'm going to be the only one working, you know? And so Tira stopped working, my wife, um, a few months before. I was like, you know, I'll say it's like two or three months before I then lost my job. Um, so, anyways, the company I was working for downsized. Lost my job, and uh, that was an awakening for me of like, wow, I don't think I want all my income in one place with one employer um, because then I can just lose it all at once. So that's what sent me on the path of pursuing freelancing and building up a home-based business. And uh, so I, I ventured on that path and, and attempted freelancing and then my son was born and you know for a good year um that first year was was really difficult in me trying to uh, build up my freelance business and i actually went back and forth between going back to a salary job and freelancing because i'm like eh, this isn't working and i don't know what i'm doing and we need money and we're getting behind on bills and we're getting into debt and we sank into thousands of dollars of debt. Um, and it was it was financially very difficult as I, I attempted with no training and no idea how to do it, uh, building a business from home and leveraging my skill set as a video editor to start a service business. Um, and uh, I just I just didn't have the right tools or training on how to build that business and on sales and 
networking and, and all the skills that are necessary beyond your craft to be able to make it a success. So I, I out of desperateness, like I said, I kind of ping pong between going back to salary jobs and then quitting. Um, but eventually I, I committed to freelancing and building that home-based business. Um, but a big part of it is that I had to, I had to earn money ASAP. Um, and I had that pressure, uh, to, to earn that money. Um, but it's hard to earn money when you're in a place of being desperate because the energy that you're giving off when you're trying to close a deal with a potential client, um, it very much pushes people away and it, it actually makes it harder to get clients because you're almost, you're, when you're coming from a place of desperateness, it, uh, it, the energy it exudes, it, 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 just, it just pushes opportunities away. Um, and so I had to shift my relationship with money. I had to discover, well, why am I feeling so desperate? Um, and a lot of it had to do with my perspective of money and how I was seeing money as my source of security rather than my relationships. And so I had to shift uh, through a lot of just journaling and talking myself through it and various mindset training techniques. I had to shift my subconscious thinking and my perspective on how I saw money and um, and how I, I saw it as this thing where uh, it was the source of happiness and it was the source of security rather than, oh, no, it's my family relationships. It's my home. It's the 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 home that I'm creating that is my source of security. Money is economically an important part of our life. And uh, but I needed to shift, first of all, how I saw where I was putting my source of security, because that's what was making me very desperate. I'm like, hey, if you're united with your family you have a solid home, uh, you can come together and figure out how to produce what you need to live and survive. Um, and uh, so that is the most important thing, those relationships. So I had to shift that perspective. Also, I had to shift my beliefs about money being a bad thing. I thought it was a bad thing. I thought that money was the source of of contention and stress because you know growing up you see your parents fighting about money and you see society talking about it negatively and so I had a lot of these negative beliefs regarding money and uh, thinking it was a bad thing thinking it was the source of evil and the source of uh, just contention so of course I didn't want it um, now this was mostly subconscious um, my conscious mind was like I want money I need money <laughs> but subconsciously I didn't want it and uh, I didn't want the stress that came with it. So I was pushing it away and it was affecting my ability to do what was necessary to find clients. And then also when talking to potential clients, it affected my ability to really close the deal because deep down, I didn't really want that success. Um, I was afraid of that success. And I was uh, afraid of what money could bring negatively to my life. So... I encourage you to audit your beliefs about money. What do you believe about money? Um, we will we will have an entire episode devoted to money mindset and defining money and how to improve your relationship with money. Um, but for now, just audit your beliefs on money and uh, and and switch your thinking on it so that it's a good thing so that you see it as a good thing and that you don't have any negative uh, perceptions of it or you're not attaching your happiness or your security to it um, because that that makes a big difference. So when I, when I really changed my perspective on that, it did start to open up opportunities for me and I was able to start actually getting enough money to pay bills and get my business going. Um, but coming back to like the, the, the role, the balancing act of being a dad and being an entrepreneur, building up that, that home-based business, um, for the first year or so on the, on that side of it, it wasn't too hard on the fact that 
Uh, well, there are a lot of difficulties that come with being a new parent and getting used to that. But overall, having a baby and working at home, just one kid and he was a baby. Um, it's not like it wasn't stressful in the fact that he wasn't interrupting me throughout the day wanting to play, right? He was a baby. He was perfectly content just being with mom all day and uh, and just hanging out and didn't want my attention. Didn't I mean, didn't need uh, come into my office demanding my attention. Um, he was satisfied with me just giving him attention when I was able to, when I wasn't working. <laughs> um, and uh, so it was easier for me to have my space. I didn't yet need to learn how to manage having a kid that uh, wanted me more involved throughout the day. Um, but even with that said, I still didn't know how to a hundred percent close my business after work was done. You know, I would, I would be done with work for the day, but I'd still be thinking about business stuff. And I wasn't a hundred percent focused on my wife and my baby son. And my wife called me out for that and helped me realize that I was doing that, that my mind kept staying on work throughout the evening, even when I was done. So that was a lesson I had to learn as I had to, uh, set a schedule and stick to it and because uh, I was more so working randomly opposed to just working in a consistent schedule and that also made it more difficult for me to to turn my brain on and off to my business and work um, so I actually made an open and closed sign that I had in my room um, that I that I in my office that I hung up on the wall that had an open part that was facing me and then I'd flip it to close when I was done for the day. And, uh, it helped uh, my son Oliver as well as he got older to have that visual signal that dad's working or not working. Um, but as Oliver got older, uh, of course, uh, the interruptions started to increase and, uh, he wanted to play with dad during the day. He didn't understand why I had to go into this office and ig ignore him and focus on what I was doing with work. Um, and, uh, so that's when the schedule again became really important, um, that, uh, I couldn't just be constantly working on my business and I had a growing family that needed more of my attention. And, um, you know, my wife always needed my attention, right? But she, being an adult, had an easier time understanding, okay, he's working. Um, whereas my son did not quite understand that and the economics of it yet. And he's starting to, he's almost five, he's starting to understand that, okay, when dad is working on his computer, he's earning money. And with that money, we're able to pay for X, Y, and Z. Um, but it doesn't mean that the, the interruptions are totally non-existent, but it is much better than before. Um, so you do have to keep adapting as your kids are getting older. And I'm sure as my kids get out of the phase of being very young children, it, it, it will just get easier and easier uh, regarding the them understanding when dad has to work, he has to work. Um, but you get to learn a lot of lessons in those early years. Um, and with, with my son, Oliver, um, who's almost five, it, because me working at home is what he's always known. Uh, there hasn't been too much questioning it from him. Like it's harder. I think when you have a, a child who's, you know, five or six or seven, or, you know, they're, they're older to be more aware of what's going on. And, uh, dad has been, away from home at work for a time and that's what they've been used to. And then all of a sudden dad's at home. I feel like that can be a harder transition because then they, they have strongly associated dad being at home with dad, not working. Um, whereas in my situation, it's normal for Oliver to think of dad working when he's just in his home office and that he can click in and out of that. And, uh, so he, he has understood that and I think has had an easier time accepting that as, as normal than if like, he doesn't remember when I, well, he wasn't even born yet when I actually worked away from home, uh, right after college, I actually had a commute to a job and he wasn't born yet. So wouldn't remember that, 
But uh, there, there was a big lesson that I learned around when he was around three years old, when uh, he would start to come to my office a lot and just start banging on the door. And I would have my office door locked to try to keep him out. <laughs> and he wanted my attention um, or he just needed a change and um, like a change of people. Like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm done hanging out with mom. I want to hang out with dad. And uh, so he would come banging on the door and I might have been in a meeting or I was recording a video and I would get frustrated with him because I'm just like, come on, Oliver, just let me work. <laughs> um, and, and then sometimes, you know, I would have embarrassment of like, hey, if I'm on a meeting with a client and my son was charging into the office or, or hitting loudly on the door or screaming or something um or when he was younger and 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 crying a lot too like i would have this self-consciousness of like what are they going to think what are my clients going to think that i'm so unprofessional that i just don't have things together and how are they going to trust me to do a good job for them when i have children in the background that are pulling away my attention and i had all these worries that um uh, i'd have a hard time closing deals with potential clients if they caught wind of what's happening in the background with chaotic loud children <laughs> or that my uh current clients would lose that trust or get worried that somehow i was distracted and weren't able to do work for them properly um and uh first of all if you're having those same worries don't <laughs> um don't because they are all invented um, your clients, they don't care as much about that as you think they do. And actually, uh, the pandemic, uh, definitely helped, uh, a lot more, uh, clients have, uh, open up and, and be more understanding of that when everyone was forced to go work at home. And that included all of my clients being forced to work at home. All of a sudden, when we're getting on a meeting, guess where they're at? They're at home too. They're no longer in an office building getting on a video chat with me. And their kids are in the background making noise. And now they realize what it's like to work at home and have a family. And they're in their space. Um, so they became, I think there probably was some level. I think some of it was me exaggerating their judgmentalness in my own mind because of my own insecurities on it. And I think some of it was some legitimate, um, them, uh, actually having some concern towards like, uh, that there, I think there was more judgment coming from the corporate world of people who haven't worked at home and, uh, didn't know what that was like. And when they would communicate with me and they would, uh, hear the atmosphere that I was in, um, or see it if my son just kind of walked in and I was in a meeting, um, that it would cause some concern for them of like, okay, is this professional? Is he a true professional? Is he going to be able to handle our project and so forth? Um, so COVID definitely helped me in that regard <laughs> where the rest of the world became much more open to that. And they realized, oh, okay, yeah, we can actually be productive and we can get work done and have our kids and our family in our workspace that it is possible um, that ultimately the work still got done and I was able to deliver and uh, it didn't interfere with what I provided to them. But um, there was a lot of changing I had to do in my own judgmentalness of the situation. <laughs> and uh, so some some things that I, uh, that I did is one, I got to a point where I had to accept more fully my role as a dad. And I, I it, it was a couple of years into building out my business where I, I realized, oh, being a dad is actually my first passion, not what I was doing in my business with video production. You know, I was passionate about video production, but, um, there were certain aspects of it that I wanted to pursue and focus more on. You know, I wanted to go and be a Hollywood filmmaker and I had other aspirations that I was clinging on to. Um, but then I realized, huh, uh, being a dad and being able to provide for my family was actually my first and primary passion. 
And uh, second to that is being an entrepreneur. So dadpreneur, dad first, entrepreneur second. And when I realized that, it, it helped bring a lot of peace of mind regarding me having both of those roles. I no longer felt like they were in conflict with one another. There was there was quite a while where I felt like, you know, me trying to be a dad and me being an entrepreneur at the same time, sometimes they would have conflict of like me not being able to fully pursue my ambitions in the way that I wanted to because of my responsibilities as a dad. Um, but then I realized, oh, that's okay. Like those aren't my actual top ambitions. My top ambition is being a, as good of a dad as I can be and in raising children that um, have self-confidence and belief in themselves and have great knowledge and and are able to contribute to this world even better than much better than I can uh, that became my main passion and that really actually helped that helped me actually grow my business faster and gain more success in my business funny enough when I was able to put the brake a little bit um, when I was able to kind of just put a bit of a break on and slow down my and put a check on my ambition career wise in order to prioritize being a dad first. Yeah, my uh, career actually grew faster. So that was an important discovery. And that is something that will be true to you as well. If if it hasn't already become true to you. So as a parent, whether you are a mom or a dad, that's a very important lesson for any of you to learn. And it's especially apparent when you are working at home and you're building a business from home that a lot of peace comes when you finally embrace the role of being a parent as being your first passion and, and just being okay to slow down on your career ambitions a little bit as far as not obsessing so much over them and not putting so much emphasis into them as being the thing that's going to provide you happiness. And I think parents that don't accept that and learn that lesson really struggle and they're constantly, what happens is you start to see your children as someone and something that is getting in the way of you achieving success in your career and you start to build resentment towards them and I know that I started to build resentment towards being a dad and it wasn't even fully a conscious thing um, because I'm like ah like my responsibilities as a dad and um, these things are, are are competing they're competing with my career ambitions and they see it seems like they're getting in the way of making it happen um, but I had it all wrong once I was able to accept and and really be okay with that role of being a dad and being a parent, my career success took off. So funny how that works. Um, when we put what's most important in life first, other things come together in unusual ways. Um, it's like the universe and 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 God. They all. Uh, ensure that you are <laughs> taking care of when you prioritize what's most most important and it is a universal thing as human beings that the people closest to us are the most important thing so your spouse your children um uh if you are in that dynamic like i am uh become the most important thing and when you prioritize that <sighs> Uh, you really do receive a lot of peace and uh, your business will grow uh, much better than before. But it is also accepting the reality that you are still, you do have to sacrifice certain career ambitions in order to fully invest in that role as a parent. That there are certain jobs and certain things you can't commit to if you want to prioritize being that parent that is present in your children's lives fully um, so that you are truly the one raising them and you are and my wife and I we go into more detail about this concept 
in the episode where she came on as a guest just a couple episodes ago. So you can go and check that out where we discuss more about making your family the priority and giving more time for your family and so forth. Um, but that was one of the biggest lessons I learned that made a huge shift for me. So, um, I wanted to, to, to close this conversation by just discussing some last few tips uh, of, of some tangible things I did to make things easier working at home as a dad. And one of them has to do with committing to a specific schedule. You have to type up a schedule of when you're working and when you're not working, you have to print out that schedule. And if you have a laminator, which now you can get a laminator for like 30 bucks on Amazon, um, laminate it and then put it up on the fridge or put it up somewhere in your house where everyone in the family can see it easily on a daily basis. Um, it really makes it an iron clad thing when you are more deliberate in that way with these are my work hours and you commit to those work hours. And uh, yes, it's okay if, if, if sometimes you're going off schedule and you're moving things around for certain, you know, family events or um, uh, the various other priorities that come up. But for most days and, and most weeks, you are committing to that schedule and it makes it much easier on you and it makes it much easier on your family and on your children. They get used to that schedule. Even if like my children aren't at the age yet where they fully understand time, my son is constantly trying to understand it better. Um, but it's amazing how much they do understand about time, even subconsciously, that if that schedule is in place, um, he almost knows and he just senses when it's like, OK, it's time for dad to work. OK, it's time. It's like even though he doesn't fully understand how, like, how a calendar works and the days of the week and so forth, like, he knows when Friday comes and it's not supposed to be a work day because I, I take Friday, Saturday and Sundays off mostly. Sometimes I do a little bit of work Friday morning. Um, but he knows when it's a day when dad doesn't usually work, even though he doesn't fully understand the calendar. And that's what's really funny. Like these children, they really pick up on on the routine and uh, and and their mind grips on to that. And so it has it made it a lot easier for him to be able to allow me to work and and not try to interrupt um, when uh, I stick to that schedule. And then having a physical space where you are working that is consistent, that's really important too. I know that there are times, you know, the advantages of working at home is that you can just grab your laptop out and sit in your bed and work or sit on a couch downstairs or in your living room. Um, but if you keep switching up where you were, and sometimes occasionally I'll just grab my laptop out and I'll, you know, sit in the backyard and work and, or, uh, or down in the kitchen or living room. Um, but it is more occasional that I do that. It's definitely not a default. The majority of the time, most days I'm working in my home office on my main computer because that signals to my children that dad is at work when I have a physical location that is designated for work. So regardless of what your situation is regarding the kind of house you have, I encourage you to set up a space that is your primary workspace and that will help your children to uh, respect those boundaries more of, okay, you're at work, so I'm going to let you work. Um, and also you can have various signals of your openness to them coming into your space. So like uh, my door, I use it as a communication device. That if the door is wide open, then just feel free to come in and do whatever you want to do. If if my son wants to come in and play with something, know that, hey, it's still a work hour. I'm still working. But if you need to talk to me for a minute, you can. If you want me to help you with a Lego creation real quick, I can probably pause for a couple of minutes. Um, I'm in a more flexible state. But if I'm like really hyper focused on something, I can't be interrupted at all. Um, then my door is usually cracked or it's just closed, but it's not locked. Um, I, I used to lock my door when I would be working. And one thing that I learned is that as my son got older, um, he didn't like that. And uh, so he was causing much more of an interruption when my door was locked. 
but when I decided to be okay to let him into my space, when he wanted to come into my space, the interruptions decreased a lot, funny enough. And uh, he didn't even come to my office as often. (laughs) Um, But energetically, him just knowing that I am allowing him into my space, that if he wants to come into my workspace, he can. Um, It actually helped him to be more okay that dad has to work for a few hours on, on this schedule, Monday through Thursday. Dad is working from this time to this time. Um, and yeah, there are still times when I have to just pause what I'm doing and look him in the eye and have a quick conversation with him on the importance of me focusing on what I'm doing with work and how when I'm done, I'll be able to then help him with this or, or play with him and do this. Um, and, you know, with him being at the age he is where he's four years old, going on five soon, um, like that's still going to be a thing for a time. And, and even when he's a little older, it's probably still a thing, you know, every so often. But uh, I think that the important thing is, is that if they come into your space and they're trying to get your attention, they want you to do something or they want you to stop working or play. I've had an easier time when rather than trying to just push him away and say, just Oliver, just just go away. I just need to work. And, and rather than getting impatient and trying to push them away, pause what you're doing, you know, stop the clock on you know, for tracking time for what you're doing. And just have a quick conversation and it only usually takes a couple of minutes to really get on their level and explain to them what you're doing and why it's important and that you will that they are heard it's like i hear you i know that you want to play with me but i need one hour and then i will be done and when i give them that time limit okay of okay at this time and in one hour i will be ready to invest my 100 percent attention into you and then we will get to do this and he's and he uh is getting better and better at being able to understand time somewhat. But even when he had no idea and concept of time, just the fact that I gave him that attention for a quick minute and told him that he was heard and that I would give him attention when I was done, it helps them to then go away and, and let you work um, because they know that they've been heard, their voice was heard, and they know that uh, you will um, give them that attention because you've scheduled it. You have scheduled them into your schedule and it makes them feel important and appreciated. And so definitely take that time uh, when you are getting interrupted to get on their level and communicate that with them. But it just comes back to the overall concept of letting them into your space. I literally have, as you can see behind me, um, that is oliver's that's oliver's desk and that's his workspace and there's legos and other things that fun things that he works on and um and he enjoys being able to just come into this office when he wants and go back there and work on and things that he wants to do um and so me actually setting up a space for him has really helped uh as well for him to feel totally welcome in dad's world, in dad's work world. Um, So that's something I encourage you to think about is how can you do a better job at letting your children into your world, into your space, into your workspace. And you got to ditch, you got to ditch the the worry, the self-consciousness that your clients, that the people you're working with, um, are going to judge you in some way for that. Uh, especially after COVID they're, they're not. And, and as long as you're owning it, often I've found that people tend to judge us for things when we're judging ourselves. It's almost like we project it onto them. So if you are owning it and you are confident in your ability to manage being a dad and doing your work, um, they will, your clients will also have more confidence in you and they won't be worried that you're not going to accomplish the work that you need to do for them. They're not going to be worried that you're not going to be able to be focused enough because they don't see you worried. <laughs> and they don't they see that you are confidently handling both roles um, makes a huge difference. And that's why I was able to grow my business faster, because I got to a place where I was starting to confidently handle both roles and embrace both roles. So I was no longer having the insecurity 
that was then causing my clients to actually feel uncomfortable. Um, so, uh, really brainstorm different ways that you can let your kids into your space and, uh, and know that it's okay to set up those boundaries. You have your work schedule, your family is all on board with it. They know what it is. And, uh, you know, having a spouse definitely helps where they're able to help to manage the young children. Um, but if you're not in that situation and you're a single parent, uh, it's, it's possible too. It is possible, but you just have to take that time and slow down and really communicate to your children, uh, what needs to be done because it's very easy to get impatient with them and, and yell and just, and, and want to push them out of your space when they keep interrupting. But if you just take that time to hear them out, to see them, to let them into your space, um, you'll be surprised at how well even the youngest of children can understand what it is you're doing and be okay with it and respect it and uh, allow you to do what you need to do to provide for them. Um, so hopefully today's conversation was helpful to you. Uh, it's something that we will certainly come back to time and time again, the aspect of being a parent and being able to run a business from home and how to manage and balance that, um, will certainly be a recurring theme on this show, but hopefully I, uh, was able to get things started in the process of you fully embracing the role of being a dadpreneur or a parentpreneur um, and being able to put that parent role first to ultimately actually find more success in your business. If uh, you have any questions or uh, you uh, want more advice on specific aspects of being a dad or a parent at home and, and managing the process of building a business at the same time, um, definitely reach out to me. Uh, leave a comment on YouTube or uh, send an email through my website. Go to airlight.tv where you can learn more. You can find the show notes and make sure to subscribe on podcast apps, YouTube, so that you don't miss further videos on the concept and topic of entrepreneurship from home, building a home-based business, and being able to successfully manage a family and home life while also building that business and making the home the center of your life. I am Chad Grevelese, and I wish you uh, a better day. I hope that today uh, you can immediately start applying the principles that you learned so that you can have less stress as a dadpreneur. And I will talk to you next time.